This is the Anarchist Words on entry number 24, and I'm going to talk about day four at the Mises University. We start off the lectures with Gary North of his experience with Ludwig von Mises. He's known as the kid, and that he was the youngest person in the room in which Ludwig von Mises would give his talks and uh, his lectures, and that he would tell Gary North that you can stay here as long as you know, don't cause a lot of problems, right? Don't talk too much. And of course, yeah. And he is someone then who would know him personally uh, more than anyone else surviving today. And then when uh, I asked him a couple of questions after class, if he ever known Ludwig von Mises to vote, to advocate for a politician, support a political party, Gary North said no to all three of them. And so that's another marvelous trait of Ludwig von Mises. Uh, great to hear that, of course. And of his origins, though, it's a mystery. He was born in 1881 uh, to Jewish parents out there in Eastern Europe and Galicia. Eventually, he would be drafted, enslaved to fight uh, in the onslaught of nationalism in World War I. I would say a combination of that experience and his eventual economic advisor position in the government in Austria uh, would give him a good understanding of the inner workings of statism. Uh, he would start to produce a lot of works against socialism, against Nazi, Hitler, Hitler's Nazi Germany. Uh, eventually this sort of stuff would affect him in that his wife telling him, listen, uh, things are not getting really good here in Europe. We, we better get the hell out of here. Uh, because of course, Hitler will eventually take over Europe and with his anti-Jewish policies, they would be captured. Right, so they escaped. And actually, there is an awesome comic book out there by Paul Pope that depicts a situation in which Ludwig von Mises escapes Nazi Germany, but in an area in which Batman is the vigilante hero in that era. And that Batman is hearing a lot of uh, noise in terms of Nazi soldiers uh, getting a hold of his works. And so Batman going out there to race against time to stop them from continuing to steal their works and throw it into a warehouse to run or, or worse, burn. Uh, he did not want this information of this knowledge to be in enemy hands, so he tries to stop them. But outnumbered, he blows up the train instead. When in actuality, when, he, when Ludwig von Mises escaped Nazi Germany, you would think his books would be burned by, or by, by the Nazis, but they weren't. Uh, and when the other vile form of socialism took over, communism, they also did not burn his books. And it remained safeguarded in a library in Russia for a long time until two years ago, a fire swept through the library and burned many of those collections. Uh, but there are some people out there today that went out there to make copies and to kind of preserve a lot of this information today. And that's all we have, I would say, in terms of Ludwig von Mises and his origins. It's still very much a mystery. And here in the United States at age 60, having nothing but the faith and the fortitude, encouragement of his wife started all over again and writing many works against socialism and just voluminous works in terms of producing human action as magnus opus. Uh, there's actually a typewriter at the Mises Institute that you can see in which he did type that out. Uh, and it's great because many of those works um, influence me today especially the economic calculation problem through one of his essays, which shows how socialism fails fundamentally because it's, it's impossible for government to allocate resources efficiently without prices. And prices is something that emerges naturally, organically, through market competition, through, through trade. It's something that producers need to see so that way they can estimate whether or not they should use this material or that material, right, in terms of producing goods and services. But when government eliminates it, uh, government themselves can't value that, can't make that assessment, can't make that calculation. And as a result, they allocate resources inefficiently. I mean, look at your local post office today to see what I mean. But this is uh, why Venezuela is failing right now, price controls. This is why USSR collapsed. Uh, this is why fundamentally socialism cannot work. So this influence has not just affected me, it's affected a lot of people worldwide. Now there's a Mises Institute, as it were, in Brazil, is affected, uh, influenced uh, Frederick Hayek, influenced uh, Murray Rothbard, Hoppe, uh, Gary North, of course, and many of the professors at the Mises Institute and the foundation, Lou Rockwell, of course, coming together to put together a, a way for this knowledge to never be forgotten, uh, for people to still continue the pursuit of freedom, to continue to fight against socialism and the ills that it brings. And so I'm honored today to continue that heritage, that tradition, 
to fight against socialism, to bring forth real economics, and to always uh, fight for, for the good. I will leave you guys with more interviews that I took place at the Mises Institute. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys at the Victory Party. So where are you from, and what brings you to the Mises Institute? Uh, I'm from Sweden. Um, Mises Institute is probably the best educational experience you can have. The most intellectual gathering of people and really smart minds, so obviously I'm here. Uh, I'm from Jamestown, North Dakota, and uh, yes, I was on a campaign and met this uh, guy named Marty Risky, who was former chair of the Libertarian Party in North Dakota, and um, he asked me if I wanted to come to Mises Institute, and I said, absolutely, so that's why I'm here. I'm from Marshall uh, University in West Virginia, and I'm here to learn some stuff. What do you think of government, and should it be abolished? Uh, I believe in self-government under God. And so anything that gets between me and my ability to self-govern, I would like to have abolished. I try not to think of government, and yes. <laughs> I think government's a joke. Completely unnecessary, more harmful than beneficial, and it should definitely be abolished. And what does free market anarchy mean to you? Uh, Anarcho-capitalism, I suppose. You got some lefties saying free market anarchism is like socialism with free trade. That's not what it means. That's never what it's meant. The ability to... Uh... <clears throat> The ability to have transactions and uh, uh, contracts with individuals of your own choosing whenever you want and however you want. So. so free market anarchy to me means get the fuck out of my way, leave me alone, and enjoy the benefits of capitalism. Are you an enemy of the state? Yes, I am. Of course I'm an enemy of the state. Anytime. I have a shirt that says enemy of the state on it, and I wore it to my White House tour. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's it. Thanks, buddy. <laughs>